today I thought I would take you along for a little bit of shopping at Half Price Books. Um, I'm first going to go to the gym and then um, get a coffee and then I will be heading over to Half Price Books to shop with a friend. Uh, there's no books it, like specifically on my list other than maybe if I happen to see a copy of Fourth Wing I would buy it. Um, do I think there's going to be a copy of Fourth Wing? Absolutely not. Um, I did buy the ebook but um, I would like the physical copy because I have a feeling I'm going to like it. I haven't even read it yet, but my friend and I were going to buddy read it at some point. Um, but anyway, oh, the cat and the dog are fighting in the background. Don't mind them. They're playing. Um, but anyway, I just wanted to shop around. I kind of wanted to look at the cozies, um, maybe look at some historicals, maybe see, um, if there's any like good YA fantasies. I don't know what I'm in the mood for. I just want to peruse. I think I still have a gift card. And I thought it would make a fun little vlog and haul. So I will see you when I get there. for my little shopping vlog. Um, I had to put my hair up. It's like so hot outside today. Um, it's just crazily thrown up right now, but a little haul. Um, did I need any of these books? No. Did I get them? Yes. Do I have anywhere to put them? Absolutely not. Um, but I'm just going to do a little haul for you. Go through with what, go through what I got. So first, I got The Highwayman by Kerrigan Byrne. Um, I've heard so many good things about this book. Um, I do know that there are some trigger warnings. I don't remember what they are, but I will definitely be looking those up before I read it just to make sure it is um, a book that I am in the mood or in the mind space to read. Um, but I haven't read a Kerrigan Burn before and I've heard really good things. So I am excited to give it a try. Gotta get that dumb sticker off. Um, but from what I understand, um, based off the back of the book, um, it is about a man who is a very much a villain and he is going to somehow use this lady, Farah. don't love that name, but um, I don't remember what she does. I read this earlier, but oh, it's a captive romance. I didn't know that. That's probably where some of the trigger warnings come from. Um, the cat and dog are playing again. Um, but he's like a pirate type character, even if he is, um, he's wealthy and like high in society, but like very like con man type of vibes is what I'm getting from it. Um, and he wants to use her somehow to get revenge on someone else. Don't really know what that plan is, but, um, they end up falling in love somehow. I do think this is a on the darker side of historical romances, which is not something I do super often, but I've just heard so many good things and then I'm especially just on Kerrigan Byrne in general, so I'd like to give it a try. And then another historical romance. I've never bought one of these bind-ups before, um, but I've been wanting to read a Vanessa Riley book, so I got The Brides of London. So it is a um, like combo of the Bittersweet Bride and The Bashful Bride. Um, and I just thought, you know, for $4, two books in one, sounds pretty good. I have started a Vanessa Riley book before and I didn't finish. But animals are having a lot of fun playing with each other. Um, and that's not because I didn't like it, but I just wasn't really in the mood for historical when I had picked it up. And I was listening to it and I have found, in general, listening to historical romances isn't as enjoyable experience for me as reading them. I don't know what it is. Like I have genres that I listen to and genres that I read. And this is one of the genres that I read on paper or ebook. Um, so this is the first one, The Better Sweet Bride is about a widow who um, needs to find a new husband to secure her land because someone is trying to buy it. Um, and she, I guess is like, um, 
writing letters back and forth to an anonymous ad in the paper and she's kind of fallen in love with him but she doesn't know who he is yet and she finds out that it's the exact guy who is or the son of the guy who's trying to buy her land so that'll be fun a little uh, forbidden romance type of vibe and then uh mistaken identity and then the bashful bride is about um an heiress who elopes with a handsome actor uh but she, there is so much more to him than she discovers than meets the eye in order to save the marriage from the shyest woman alive she must publicly woo the most desirable man her husband so i like that um that will be I think an interesting one because we don't often get to see um I mean we do but I haven't read many historical romances where we start with the couple getting married really early on um and having to kind of save their marriage from there and and outside of the trope of like a forced marriage or like um like a family making them get married that kind of thing or a situation making them get married um this was a willing marriage and now they have to kind of find each other in that relationship. So next, uh, this book is going to kill me. I don't know when I'm going to read it, but um, I got, this sticker is not going to come off as easy. There we go. Um, the Sun and the Star by Rick Riordan and Mark Oshiro. Um, this is, oh, it's going to kill me. I can tell you that. This is a story that follows Nico and Will, um, which if you have read the Percy Jackson series, which I will be doing sort of a read along of all the Percy Jackson books fairly soon on here. I announced it a couple months ago and I haven't started yet, um, but that's one uh, because we don't exactly, I don't think we have a date for the Percy Jackson show yet. Um, and I kind of want to try and time it with that. And I just haven't been in the mood for middle grade in a little bit. But um, Nico is a son of Hades. He has a very tragic past. I love him, everyone loves him. Um, and somewhere in the first Percy Jackson and the Olympian, Olympian series, I don't really remember when, it's like revealed that um, the reason he like hates Percy so much, there is an eyelash in my eye, um, or that like he doesn't get along with Percy or he acts weird around Percy is because he had like a major crush on him, um, which is still one of my favorite scenes of all time. It's so funny. Um, but then jump forward sometime, he um, is dating Will Solis, who is son of Hermes, if I'm remembering right, because I the god of healing, right? That's actually my godly parent, in case you were wondering if that's who I'm thinking of. No, Apollo. Apollo. Yeah, no, it's Apollo, not Hermes. Um, that is my godly parent, which after reading the Apollo series, I'm like, do I want this this fool to be my godly parent? But according to the Rick Riordan like, quiz on the website, that's who I would be, which honestly is just rude. I get it. I'm a nurse. God of healing. Ugh. Anyway, um, the back says, I don't know a whole lot about this. I haven't seen any reviews, but um, it says, Demigods Nico D'Angelo and Will Solis must endure the terrors of Tartarus and their attempt to rescue an old friend in this thrilling adventure co-written by best-selling author Rick Riordan and Marco Shiro. Um, oh, look at that. So I have no idea what ends them up in, in, I also don't know how to say Tartarus. Is that Tartar? Anyway, um, I don't know why they end up there or if there's anything I need to read beforehand. Um, like, do I need to finish the Apollo series before I can read this? Because I haven't been able to read the fifth Apollo book. Um, because the fourth one broke me so bad, like, not Mark of Athena bad, but like, it broke me. And so I haven't read the fifth one. Um, I wonder if I have to read that before I read this. Anyway, um, so as the son of Hades, Nico D'Angelo has been th through so much, um, blah, 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 blah. Oh, yeah. No, I'm gonna have to read The Trials of Apollo. Damn, I don't want to read The Trials. Apollo, oh, it's too sad. There's a spoiler for the trials of Apollo in this summary, so I apparently do have to read it. It's a spoiler I already knew, and the reason why I haven't continued on in that series. Anyway, um, anyway, him and his boyfriend, a ray of sunshine in his life is his boyfriend, um, and he, this is very much a grumpy sunshine story. Um, someone is calling out from him, out to him. Oh, oh my god, are they gonna go save Bob? 
that's the cutest. I will literally, I'm gonna start crying. Um, anyway, I guess they have to go do that. Um, let's look at, I can't, what was the name of it? Uh, I don't think I've read a book by Mark Oshiro, but I think I own one. Anger is a Gift, I think is the one that I own. Maybe I'm making that up, I don't know. Let's look at this. Oh, we've got some suns on the cover, sun and the star, get it, get it. Um, and then this is really cool. So Nick and Will's journey starts in Camp Half-Blood. Like it's a cool map on the end papers. I really like that. Um, Camp Half-Blood, Sally Jackson's apartment, um, the door of Orf Orpheus, Steps to the Underworld, Hades Palace, River Styx, blah, 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 blah. And then it's on the other end papers too. It shows all the places that they go. That's really cool. So I'm really excited to read this. Um, a little less excited now because that I have to finish The Trials of Apollo before I can read this. Um, and the fact that what it says in this summary, I don't know. I don't know. I don't want to spoil anything because I feel like Trials of Apollo is not old enough to be like openly spoiling. But um, yeah, I, it, yeah. Anyway, this is a really long update of a haul, but... Next, I got The Last Life of Prince Alistair by Alexander Bracken. Um, I got this. Oh, no. The sticker didn't come off nicely um, because it was in the clearance section for $4. A hardcover book for $4. Okay, I'm going to have to use some alcohol swabs to get off the sticker, but and it's a hardcover. So this is the Prince, not Prince, um, Prosper Redding series. Uh, this is book two. I don't know how many books are in the series. I don't know if it's a duology or if there's more than that. Um, but I got the first one um, a couple months ago because I met Alexander Bracken at her signing. Um, I'll link that little vlog below if you want to watch that. Um, but that's one of the books that I got there and got signed. Um, so I figured might as well get the sequel. How can you pass up a deal for four dollars? So that is that. I don't actually know what these those books are about. Um, I think it's this kid has a ghost friend or something. I don't know. Um, and then probably my most ridiculous purchase. I got this. Let me see if I can get this sticker off. Um, that one came off. I got this special edition of Chain of Gold because it was so beautiful. I simply could not pass it up. Um, I don't know exactly what special edition this was made for. It's by Walker Books, and the copyright page had stuff about, um, I think it was published in the UK. All it says is printed and bound by CPI Group in London, um, or at least in the UK, I mean. Um, but I don't really know what this special edition, like who this special edition was created for. But anyway, let's just appreciate it. So it says, love cuts deeper than any blade. Obviously, we all know how much I love um, Cassandra Clare's world. Um, I still, I think I stand by Julian and Emma, their series being my favorite series, but my favorite ship would probably be still Simon and Izzy. I don't know. Um, but like the characters in these books, I also really, really love. So anyway, um, it has this art piece and my edition. So here's the thing. The edition I have, I think, is a collecting, like a collected, collect, what am I saying? Um, a first edition, like a collector's first edition. That's the word I was getting at. Um, but this is a different collector's first edition, okay? Anyway, I have this art piece already, but here's the art piece that was in a lot of the first editions. This book kind of has to be cleaned up a little bit, but, but that's okay. And then our in papers are this lovely orange, and then the actual, um, the naked book has the cover that the other book is the dust jacket of um so i just love it chain of gold last hours you can tell actually that this is a uk because look at how um the font is formatted it is different my mortal instruments box set is uk editions and they've got the same where the name is bigger the font is smaller um of the title it looks a little bit different and then it says shadow hunters along the bottom which i don't think my u.s edition has that so um these are the uk cover editions if you can see it's just formatted a little different than the u.s ones um but yeah i and i was talking to my friend while i was buying this i'm like do i need this 
no, I, but obviously, clearly I got it. Um, and I was thinking, I was like, how many Cassandra Clare books do I own? Maybe I'll do like a cute little, like just walk through one day showing all the Cassandra Clare books that I own because either Cassandra Clare or Rick Riordan are the author that I own the most books of. Um, I think Cassie's gotta be like 20 books um, is kind of the estimate count in my head. While Rick Riordan is, he might be more, 5, 10, 15. Okay, I probably have more Rick Riordan because I think I probably have like 25 Rick Riordan. Um, God, that's insane. Anyway, that's my little shopping haul. Um, I hope you enjoyed. Sorry that took so long. I don't know what I was chatting on about for so long. But anyway, um, I hope you enjoyed. I upload content whenever I upload content. Um, bookish stuff, Disney stuff, whatever I feel like doing. Um, but I hope you enjoy. Like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff. And I'll talk to you guys next time. Bye.